Have you ever wondered how your computer is able to do so many things at once? As a user, you're able to browse the web, have a calculator open, as well as have a code editor open all at the same time. Multi-threading and multi-processing are two techniques that help us achieve this. Uh, for our use case, they're also able to give us insane speedups in our Python code. In this video, we'll be covering multi-threading in Python. In the next one, we'll be looking at multi-processing. Feel free to skip to specific parts in the video. I've added timestamps in the description box below. A process is an instance of a running program, whereas a thread is the smallest unit of execution in a process. So once you have a process, you have always a main thread that's responsible for executing the code. Now I'll just go over this super quick. Um, a thread has a stack as well as a register uh, associated with it. Um, the register is super fast memory storage that allows the program to store temporary information during its, its calculations, whereas a stack is a data structure that, uh, that ensures that the program is following the right order of things. Now, what multi-threading allows us to do is to have multiple threads um, in a process, which means that we can do multiple tasks at once. So, uh, so just to motivate this, I will just be looking at a very simple client and server example. So we'll first be looking at a single thread application. Uh, in this scenario, we have client one sending a request to the server. The problem is that client two cannot send his or her request since the server is busy serving the first client. In a multi-thread application, we have multiple threads, which means that the first thread will take care of serving client one, while the second thread will take care of serving client two. This means that both clients can basically send the requests at more or less the same time. Now it's important that we talk about some Python specifics before moving on. Um, in Python, due to something called a global interpreter lock, uh, multi-threading doesn't actually achieve parallelism, it only achieves concurrency. Now, um, feel free to, if you already know about these concepts, feel free to skip to other parts of the video. Uh, I just wanna talk a little bit about the difference between parallelism and concurrency. So in sequential execution, you have basically task one, task two, and task three, all um, executing in order. Um, in concurrency, you have task, uh, you have a processor starting on task one, and then at some point in time, it switches to execute task two. Now, this could be something like, you know, you could be um, requesting server, uh, requesting something from an API, and, uh, and and this could just be the API working, so you're not really doing anything, you're just sitting there and waiting. So instead of sitting there and waiting, the processor switches over to task two and begins executing on that. Now, while it's executing on task two, at some point in time, the server sends, the, uh, sends a response back to the user, and so the processor switches back to task one uh, in order to complete that, and that's you know represented by this uh, the rest of the red block so uh, once uh, it has completed that and received the response uh, it then switches back to task two to complete task two and then after that it just completes task three so the idea is that in concurrency you are so it's basically switching back and forth so it's using the downtime uh, of one task uh, to to do something else in the meantime so it's like this uh, basically switching back and forth uh, and interleaving uh, across across different tasks um, now in parallelism, it's uh, much simpler. You just literally have two tasks executing at the same time. So see here is that uh, sequential execution is slowest. Uh, this is indicated by the longest arrow and concurrency is slightly as much, much faster uh, in this particular example and parallelism it's, is, uh, is the fastest. Multithreading in Python achieves concurrency and not parallelism. What this means is that you actually only achieve a performance boost in Python with multi-threading for IO bound applications. Uh, this could be something like reading a file from a network or a database. Um, for CPU bound tasks like doing calculations or scientific computing, it is multi-processing that actually gives a speed up. So to use multi-threading in Python, you can simply import the threading module, which this is part of the Python standard library, so there is no need to install anything. We have an API worker function, which is an infinite loop that prints running and then sleeps for a second. And we also have an execute function, uh, an execute stuff function that simply prints executed. Now let's suppose that we have, we have make a call to API worker and let's suppose that we're doing some work in API worker, but at the same time, we also want to, uh, to, to call another function. So we also want to call execute stuff. Now, as you can probably tell, the code will never actually get to this part since API worker is an infinite loop. So this executed never actually gets printed. Um, so if I run this, you'll see that it calls running uh, and we never get to, uh, to execute it. Now to solve this, we can run API worker in a separate thread. Um, so to create a thread, just call threading.thread. Uh, and then give it a target where we pass the function name. So this is just uh, an object and not, so I'm not actually calling the function, we're just passing it as an object. 
and then uh, we just say thread one like that and then you say thread one dot start and this will uh, start the thread so it will start executing api worker and after this in the main thread we can call execute stuff so the idea here is that this uh, api worker will be called in this new thread that we created and execute stuff will be called in the main thread so we have two threads um, and this basically means that we can, you know, we can execute both uh, both things at more or less the same time. So if I run this again, you'll see that uh, it calls um, executed uh, so right after running. So this is where things get a bit more interesting. I still have API worker, but the idea here is that I'm calling it two times. So it's done sequentially, you know, in a loop. So one after the other, the idea is that uh, this is just to simulate, you know, like two, two clients accessing the API. And I'm also timing this. Now you can probably tell that this will take um, sequential execution, right? So it'll take uh, four seconds, around four seconds, uh, like that, yeah, four seconds. Now to speed this up, we'll just do pretty much the same thing uh, like before. So we can, oh, sorry, uh, comment this out and create uh, a thread here and just call API worker and then do the same thing. Uh, a second thread there like that and then we go thread one dot start and thread two dot start and this will now call uh, cause the cause uh, the the threads to uh, to start executing the functions and we also need to call join so join is it's like a it basically waits until the thread terminates and the reason that we need to call this is that when we have two threads like this um, thread one could finish so you, so 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 thread one could finish before thread two finishes and if that happens then it will just go through here and it will just terminate the program so essentially you know you wouldn't want to wait for both threads to finish their work before actually exiting the program you don't want work you know to be half finished you want to finish everything that we started before exiting the program now let's uh, let, let's run this and you'll notice that it's much faster, right? So the time is reduced by half since we have two threads, you know, doing the same amount of work. So before we call off for today, I just want to talk about one more thing. So if you remember early in the video, I talked about CPU bound and IO bound applications and multi-threading only gives us speed up in cases of IO bound applications. And when we do this sleep, then it's actually an example of an IO bound application. Now, if we, if we switch this, which means that, you know, we get the speed up that we observed. Now, if we if we switch this uh, with with some other function um, to make it uh, to make it CPU bound. So if we do something like this, uh, let me see, like that. Oh. So if we do something like this, where we have a nested for loop, then you will notice that we actually don't um, get any speed up. So I will just comment this part out and do the same thing like before. Then I will run this. That took around six seconds. And if I now comment this out again, and let's use the threads, you will notice that it is actually not much faster. There we go, it's actually a bit slower. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe if you like the video. And if you have any questions, uh, just write in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next one.